Wanna let him in? All right, let's let him in. Let him in. Let him come in. All right, ladies and gentlemen. One minute. Give me your attention, please, because this, this train's on a real tight schedule and we want to stop here as long as we can. I want to say, first of all, as governor of our state, we've had four stops in Georgia this far, and this is the fifth, and I want to tell the people in Thomasville and Thomas County, this is one of our fine crowds, and we appreciate you turning out like you have. It's good. It's good to be in South Georgia. It's good to be down here with the fine first lady of our land. And I want to say, too, that this train has been on the track for two days. It started out in Alexandria, Virginia. It's traveled from Virginia down through North Carolina, South Carolina, and into the state of Georgia. It's bringing with it one of the finest southern ladies that this country and this world has ever known, a person who knows our southern way of life, one who can say y'all just like we can and make us feel at home, one who we know realizes our problems, and one who stands up for the South and speaks out for the South. Now, I want to name a few of these fine Thomas County people who've been on the train. We're delighted to have Mayor Roy Lilly and Ms. Lilly, Ms. Emily Jager, Mr. Frank Neal, Mr. and Ms. Otis Johnson, Mr. Logan Lewis, Ms. Mildred Roberts, Frank Forrester, Worcester J., Ms. Worcester J., Sarah Thomas, Mr. George T. Smith, the Speaker of the House, Morgan Kiro, Ms. Smith, Emmett Chastain, Ed Kelly, Mr. Fred Scott, Jr., Mr. Max Hancock, Ms. Joanne Futch, Ms. Marcus B. Calhoun, Ms. Lawson Neal, and Mr. and Ms. Bear Rigdon over in Tifton. We're proud to have them on the train. Let's give them a big hand, too, in this session. And now, I want to present one who you all know, one who we are all proud of in the state of Georgia, one who will present the First Lady of our land, and I'm speaking of that very charming, that very beautiful, that very lovely wife of the junior senator from the state of Georgia, Mrs. Herman Talmadge, who will present our first lady. Thank you, Governor, and thank you, people in Thomasville. It's wonderful to be down here in Georgia again. You know, the, to get to come back to Georgia after being in Washington all, practically all year is one of the happiest occasions that we have. You know, Herman and I have to stay up there a great deal, and if you can't be at home, the next best thing to being at home is to be made to feel at home. And Mrs. Johnson and her fine husband have been that sort of friend to us since we've been in Washington, and it gives me a great deal of pleasure and great pride to be able to present her to you here tonight, knowing that she's my good friend, the most gracious and capable first lady that this country has ever seen. But may I present now Mrs. Lyndon Johnson. My friends of Thomasville, my friends of Thomasville, I've always known that this was a town famous for its roses, and imagine my surprise when I received a homegrown orchid. <laughs> it is from Congressman Pilcher's grandson, and it's so beautiful, I wanted to wear it, and the card with it was so cute, I may I read it to you. Dear Miss Johnson, we hope you continue to be our first lady because we like all the LBJs, including the Beagles, him and her, John Pilcher. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Sanders, the wife of your governor, tells me this is great quail country. I hope sometime I'll get to come back down here with Lyndon at a more leisurely time and enjoy uh, the beauties of the surrounding country and hunt a few of those quails. Right now we're hunting something else. <laughs> <laughs> My husband is widely known to be a busy and active man. Yes, even a rather urgently active man, but he is also a tomorrow man, a builder man, a going ahead man, a man unafraid to run that race with racing time that must be run by all men in all nations. During our years in the Congress, the tall men of Georgia, the men who helped run this country, 
have been among our closest friends and teachers and helpers. Men like Secretary of State Dean Rusk and Senator Dick Russell. And, and your able Herman Talmadge and Congressman Carl Benson. and your young and vigorous and coming Governor Sanders. My main reason for coming on this whistle stop trip, which has brought us from Washington through, this is now three full days, about 35 stops, and about, I believe it's five states, is to tell the people of the South, our friends here, that we appreciate them, we value them, we need them. <laughs> to us, this is a respected and a beloved part of the country and has been all of our life. My president, my husband, brought with him to the White House many lessons from the past learned in depression and war, and handed down from his southern ancestors who pioneered in the Southwest. It is this, more than anything else, that lies behind all the programs he has fought for to try to lead America forward into the future. As we approach November 3rd, it is you, all of you, the people that he works for in this country, who have the privilege and the responsibility of choosing your leader. These have been about 10 as hard a month as anybody lived for, because you always, there's not one of us here who doesn't remember that tragic day and the confusion into which this whole country was thrown November the 22nd, last year. Since that time, all of his thoughts, all of his energy, all of his brain, all of his heart has been centered on three things, to keep our country strong and at peace. <laughs> and to keep it economically prosperous and on a stable course with the economy working together, business and labor working together. And the third thing, a compassionate and practical plan to try to help those Americans still in need. You all have seen his handiwork. You all know what a kind of a president he will make because you've lived through those 10 hard months with us. And so, as we roll on to our next whistle stop, I want to thank you for coming out. And I know that I can abide by your good judgment in the weeks ahead in choosing the man that you want for your leader. Thank you. Because I see a lot of young folks in the crowd, I want you to know our own young daughter, Lucy Baines. The young people, I've seen an awful lot of young people here today, and it makes me realize so much that the young people of Georgia have a unique responsibility that their parents have given them by respecting them and letting them have the responsibility to vote at 18. My only hope is this, that we can reason, and through reasoning and understanding the issues, we can show our elders that we deserve this responsibility and deserve the respect that they have laid in our hands because we realize that the kind of people we elect today are going to be the kind of people we're going to put our country in the kind of a situation that we are going to have to lead tomorrow. Thank you. And now may I take just one minute and present to you the mayor of this great city, Thomasville, Mayor Roy Lilly, who will make a presentation to the First Lady of our land. <laughs> Ms. Johnson, this key to city of Thomasville comes to open our hearts as well as our city, and we want you to come back just as often as you will. Mr. Mayor, it's so appropriate. Look, it's got roses on it. Thank you, sir. We also have uh, some roses here. Ms. Johnson's well aware of the beautiful rose city of our state. We have some roses here that are being presented by the 4-H Club, Sally Neal, Don Norris, 
who are presenting these to the First Lady. And in addition to that, I want to I want to present to this audience, of course, Congressman J. L. Pilcher and Miss Pilcher, who are on the train. We have, in addition to Congressman Pilcher, we have the Honorable Hale Boggs here, who's here on the back platform, who's a whip for the U.S. House of Representatives. We have the Secretary of Commerce, the Honorable Luther Hodges from North Carolina. We have the Honorable Buford Ellington, the former governor of the state of Tennessee. And we have, of course, uh, in addition to that, uh, we have with us uh, many other dignitaries who are here on the train. <laughs> Last but not least, we have the First Lady of Georgia, who I'd better introduce, Miss Betty Sanders here, who's with me. Friends, this train is going on to Tallahassee, and the First Lady has been here. She's certainly grateful to Georgia the way you've turned out. Let's all let us... She's now being presented with a, with a bunch of our South Georgia quail, which I'm sure they will enjoy. I might say, too, these are the finest uh, placards and banners that we've seen along the Georgia thing. I certainly pay tribute to Thomasville for these wonderful placards that they've made out. And now let's let Lady Bird let us know how we feel about it in Georgia before she leaves our great state. Great. Excuse me, Governor. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Sanders has been with us all day in Georgia. He's been our MC all day. He's one of the great, young, coming, progressive governors in this country. Why don't all of you give him a hand? We can't go. You officers, we're going to pull out and the brakes have been bled, and we can't control the train absolutely. So before we move, will you please back off the crowd at least 20 feet from any side of the train, please? Ready to move as soon as we get this crowd. May I just tell everybody how darling I thought the signs were? I've been looking out there and, 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 she, and uh, on all sides, seeing so many real cute ones. Thank you. Folks, don't forget that George is going to be in a Democratic column on November 3rd. All the way with LBJ.